Today we'll start with a brief overview of PMC and our clients. Then we'll discuss traditional static value stream mapping. Then we'll briefly cover the various types of dynamic simulation tools before we focus on our dynamic simulation solution that includes a video of the tool. Then before we take questions, we'll wrap things up with a simple but dramatic example of how a static value stream map can lead to the wrong area to focus improvements on versus dynamic analysis that pinpoints the actual location of the main bottleneck. Before we dive into today's topic, I'd like to give you a brief intro to PMC, the company I work for. Since 1979, PMC has helped over 600 companies by completing more than 6,000 performance enhancing initiatives worldwide. Our commitment to excellence has brought us to the point where we are the largest independent simulation industrial engineering services firm in North America. If you are already underway with digital manufacturing initiatives in your company or are wondering where to start, PMC can assist you. PMC has worked with hundreds of businesses across all industries to improve their business performance. Shown here are just a few of our current and repeat customers. Now let's switch to today's topic, value stream mapping. Simply put, a value stream map is a pictorial or visual representation of the value stream of any process, for example, manufacturing process, product development, or even office work. It's important to understand the concept of value. Value is defined as any action or process that the ultimate final customer would be willing to pay for. For example, a sunroof is a nice feature offered by automakers, but it cannot be considered value added for a customer who does not need it and therefore is not willing to pay for it. Another example could be material movement inside the factory. It is non-value added because customers would not like to pay for it. Any physical change to the product as it evolves from raw material to a final product is value added. A typical value stream map shows the flow of both materials and information. Understanding and mapping information flows is critical to the success of the project because they often influence the amount of waste that exists in the value stream. Since value stream mapping takes in a holistic approach and includes all the stakeholders of a value stream, it can be an excellent interdepartmental communication tool as well. Eight types of waste can I be identified causing non-value added activities in any process. Many folks ignore the eighth element, non-utilized talent, which is the ideas of improvement of the operators who work at the process to be learned to be leaned, excuse me. Reduction of non-value added activities will increase productivity, but where, at which workstation, should one concentrate first in applying lean in a process? It takes time and resources to look at each step of a process and reduce the non-value added activities for each stage. Bottleneck analysis using dynamic simulation will help us to identify where at a process one can get the most return on investment of a lean application as early as possible in the lean conversion project. A quick high return at the beginning phases of a lean conversion project ignites the process team and all the stakeholders of the process affecting the overall success of the whole lean conversion. There are a large number of lean tools out there and we look at all of these and decide which ones are the best candidates to apply at a process. In many cases we apply a number of them as they are all somewhat related to each other and complement. Value stream mapping is generally the one that is done upfront as it gives the big picture on which tools to be used at which steps of a process. A value stream maps all the activities required to produce a product or fulfill a service, including those that add value and those that do not. There is a third type of activity as well, NVA-R, which stands for non-value added but required. It is also called necessary waste because it cannot be avoided. For example, non-value added activities that can be attributed to something that 
I'm sure you all know and love, government regulations. Here are a few basic icons that are commonly used in value stream mapping. They are so simple that you can draw them yourself. As you can see, value stream mapping emphasizes simplicity. So let's see how the value stream map actually looks. There are many advantages of using value stream mapping. First, it focuses on the big picture and provides a great overview of your processes. Next, it's high touch, low tech. The process of building a value stream map is very simple. All you need is a large sheet of sturdy paper with lots of sticky notes and a team of key stakeholders who know their individual areas really well. It also identifies opportunities like waste in the current state that lead to opportunities for improvement. Most importantly, it captures the complexity and disconnects of the key operational issues. Finally, it also analyzes the impact of outside entities on the value stream. This is a current state value stream map. It simply follows a product or service from beginning to end and draws a visual representation of every process in the materials and information flow. Typically, simple lean and industrial engineering principles are often used to identify and eliminate the waste areas. The next step is future state, which maps the ideal process after eliminating waste areas. Finally, the action plan actually gets the job done by focusing on who does what and by when to go from the current state to the future state. So what's missing? Let's take another look at the future state map to find out. Look at the data in these process blocks carefully. As with the current state map, these numbers are averages. All the number crunching in these maps is typically based on averages. Consider customer demand. Do you really think the analysis based on average customer demand can be robust and reliable? Of course not. Real life situations are almost always full of randomness. And as you may know, the best tool to address the issue of randomness is dynamic simulation. But then the next obvious question is, what do we do with the value stream map that has been developed after hours of hard work? Well, the good news is Siemens Technomatics plant simulation now has the capability to simulate your value stream map directly. We'll see how in a few moments by watching a video of uh, plant simulation demo model, which includes a recorded narration to keep us on track. But first, let's briefly discuss computer simulation. As you probably know, simulation quickly mimics the operation of real systems through time. Modern computer graphics and animation provide visualization of your processes, making it easier to analyze and optimize your system. To make sure we're all on the same page, I'd like to briefly discuss various types of dynamic simulation tools that you may or may not be familiar with. Simulation tools fall into several categories. Several useful products from various makers are out there. The nice thing about Siemens is that they support all these categories. Since people can often be unaware of the differences among the tools or even the existence of any of them, we'll briefly explain the major changes. Kinematic tools like Siemens Technomatics Robcat and Process Simulate Robotics focus on the details of individual work cells. They let you analyze the real-time motion of robotic work cells, optimize cycle times, optimize welding sequences, and increase process quality. It's a very valuable tool. Similarly, ergonomic tools like Jack and Process Simulate Human let you analyze human motion and optimize the ergonomics of a human operation to enhance worker efficiency and minimize injuries. Computer-aided engineering tools like NXCAE focus on the product itself. They let you analyze specialized items like thermal and flow analysis and finite element analysis early in the design process. This results in better performing products. Computer-aided manufacturing tools like NXCAM let you analyze special 
items like tool design, NC programming, fixture-based machining, and collision detection. This automates the development of molds, dies, and fixtures for higher quality, lower cost, and faster turnaround for machining. As opposed to the first four categories that focus on individual work cells or products, discrete event tools like plant simulation let you analyze the operation of an entire department or facility, making it the perfect dynamic tool to more accurately analyze and optimize a process than a static value stream map. This includes overall items like throughput, buffer or inventory sizes, workers, and scheduling. Discrete event simulations are also often referred to as throughput simulation, but most discrete event simulations do not use value stream map icons. The great news is that PlantSim has an optional VSM library that lets you see your process in action on the VSM icons that you are familiar with. This improves communication between teams. As you can see for yourself in the slightly less than six minute video that will show now. Hello, this is Ray Pashadlo from PMC. I'll be showing you a demo of the brand new VSM library that combines the static VSM methodology with the dynamic behavior of the Technomatics plant simulation model. We'll start with a quick tour of our Technomatics plant simulation value stream model of a simplified desk assembly plant. As you can see, the VSM library uses standard icons to represent suppliers, customers, transportation, inventory, and processes. The blue material flow. Orange shows information flow. At the upper left, Supplier 2 provides the legs for our desks. Transport 2 below it moves 40 legs to Inventory 2. The number below shows how many legs are in stock. It's zero now because the simulation has not run yet. Supplier 1 provides the raw material for the desktops, which are made out of wood. Transport 1 moves 10 wood units to inventory 1. Our assembly line starts with the make tabletop process, which removes wood from inventory 1 and turns it into a tabletop. Next, assemble desk removes one tabletop from inventory 3 and four legs from inventory 2, then assembles them. Next, the finished desk process removes one desk from inventory, then stains the desk. Note, during a simulation run, the number below finished desk will show the total throughput so far. Also note that the on-screen display of other input and output parameters can be easily switched on and off by you. No programming required. The assembly line ends with pack five desks, which removes five desks from inventory four and packs them up for shipment. Note that the number beneath inventory 4 is 20. That was set with the initial stock optional input parameter. This lets us easily set up a plant's initial condition. Last but not least, transport 4 moves the five desks to the customer who sends out orders and triggers production. Like everything else here, no programming is required to model this. Note, what you've seen so far is no different from a traditional static value stream map. The next slide will show how to use your value stream map to leverage the dynamic power of a Technomatics plant simulation model to go beyond what a static VSM can do for you. This is our screen after simulating 10 24-hour days of production. Note that 6,781 desks were finished. This would probably be the first problem you would notice since it's far below expected production. Also note that a desk is currently being finished while another one is being assembled. You can tell from the icons in those two processes. After seeing these results, you would probably want to locate the main bottleneck. There are several analysis tools to help you do that, like the analyzer. One place to start is with the analyzer's relative occupation button. This tool gathers time and state percentages for all processes. In this case, one problem is obvious. The finished desk process is down or failed for a large percentage of time. You discover that the hotshot bean counter who got a promotion for saving money got what he paid for, a cheap machine which goes down 50% of the time. Before presenting your case to replace that piece of junk with the same type of 
perfect equipment as the other processes, you arm yourself with proof of what that can do. First, you spend about five seconds to change the availability of the finished desk process from 50% to 100% since your preferred supplier's machines are expensive but perfect. Your what-if game pays off. Throughput skyrocketed from 6,781 to 11,688 desks. When you present this to your management team, Mr. Hotshot suggests that buying a second cheapo machine will do the trick for less money. But you soon wipe that smirk off his face. How? By using your Technomatics 3D factory CAD model to show that another machine cannot fit in the building because a load-bearing post and a steam pipe are in the way. Worst of all, the coffee machine would have to go too. If it were yesterday, you might be tempted to stop there. But Robbie's lean presentation inspired you to look for more improvements. So you take a look at the updated relative time chart. All that yellow waiting time represents room for improvement. Perhaps it's a supplier or transport issue. Or maybe you can get your customer to order more frequently. Or find another customer. Your VSM model makes it easy to try your ideas out on the computer before you invest in anything. One more thing you would probably notice. There are a lot of units in Inventory 1 and 2. A look inside the Inventory Over Time chart provides details, obviously there is plenty of room for improvement. Perhaps you'd like to do further analysis yourself, or maybe you'll think of us lean folks at PMC. We'd be glad to help. We hope you enjoyed this story, and like all good stories, it has a happy ending. Everyone at your company, except the hotshot, lives happily ever after. Well, I hope that gave you a good uh, overview of uh... What, what dynamic simulation can do. And now, here are the five reasons why value stream mapping is more accurate using dynamic simulation. First of all, you can generate robust and reliable future state maps by including randomness and in conducting sensitivity analysis, often called what-if games, something that can only be based on averages in a static value stream map. Dynamic simulation helps ensure that you can accurately quantify the impact of various improvement initiatives prior to implementation. For example, you can explore opportunities to reduce inventory in the future state map while avoiding stockouts and improve resource allocation through better visibility into the dynamics of the system. You can also leverage the theory of constraints by being able to predict shifting bottlenecks accurately through dynamic simulation as product mixes change. As you've seen in the video, PlantSim's value stream mapping includes animation that facilitates communication among various stakeholders in your projects. Finally, dynamic simulation allows you to get the most return on investment from your lean implementation right from the beginning phases of your lean projects. As you can see, our first dramatic example of static versus dynamic analysis started out as a hand-drawn value stream map of a simple process. We start with a supplier who supplies the parts necessary to build a product. The parts are delivered to the beginning of the assembly line an average of 10 minutes, but vary plus and minus 5 minutes. This is an example where real-world data is not static but random. The line has three workstations called WST1 through WST3. With buffers of infinite capacity between them. Finally, the product is delivered to the client. Based on the static value stream map, WST1 is the bottleneck because it has the highest average cycle time of 9.5 minutes. WST2 is 9.3 minutes, and WST3 is 9.4 minutes. Since the real world isn't static, before we go ahead and concentrate improvements efforts on WST1, which is the assumed bottleneck, we decide to verify the main bottleneck location with a dynamic simulation. An example of the input necessary to model the random processing time of WST2 is shown here. 
First, we tell the model to randomly select the processing time based on a uniform distribution that randomly selects a value between a minimum and maximum value. Next, we specify the min and max values based on our 9.3 minutes plus and minus 8 minutes specification in the value stream map. This translates to a minimum of 1 minute 18 seconds and a maximum of 17 minutes and 18 seconds. We set up the plant simulation to let the user enter input data in one place in, in, in a, a spreadsheet-like environment including the average processing time along with the plus minus values that let PlantSim compute the min max values. So here we're allowing the user to enter the input in the manner they've expressed it in the value stream map and then uh, it automatically gets converted to the form that PlantSim needs which is min max values. Also we can specify buffer or queue capacities. In this case we model in indicated by a negative value so that we can determine the maximum potential size of the buffers. Output values also appear here whenever a simulation is run. It includes total units produced, total time it took to make the 1,000 units, and the minimum average and maximum time parts were in the system. As you can see, this is valuable information that you don't get with a value stream map. We can also see the minimum and maximum number of parts that were in the queues. This is also very valuable information and gives us the min-max ranges to perform what-if experiments that can optimize buffer sizes. Big enough to maintain throughput without wasting extra money and space on buffers that are too big. This is another thing that cannot be determined with a value stream map. We can also see time and state percentages for the workstations, including working, waiting, and block percentages that can help us to determine the bottleneck. WST1 has the highest working percentage. In this case, that indicates that WST1 is the main bottleneck. PlantSim provides another nice view in the form of a chart where we can also identify the bottleneck. Note, if we had included other data like setup time, down times, and shift break times, those percentages would, would, uh, could have appeared here too, making it easier to analyze a more complicated process. Finally, PlantSim has a unique, extremely useful bottleneck analyzer that helps you to quickly pinpoint the probable main bottlenecks. As you can see, WST1 is listed at the top further verifying that WST1 is the main bottleneck. Assuming that the input data and assumptions for the simulation model are accurate, you now have a lot more confidence that WST1 is the main bottleneck. Now you can use the simulation to play what-if games that focus on the main bottleneck in order to optimize your process. After you break the first bottleneck, you can go through as many bottlenecks locating and breaking iterations as it takes to reach your goal. At this point you may be thinking the VSM already told me where the bottleneck is so why the heck do I need a dynamic simulation? Well let's take a look at another possible scenario. You may recall that for WST2 we modeled the processing time for an average of 9.3 minutes plus or minus 8 minutes using a random uniform distribution where there was equal, everything was equally likely to, to pop up between the two values. But what if the supplier of WST2 told you that using a negative exponential random distribution is more accurate for that machine? Note that the average time of 9.3 minutes or 9 minutes 18 seconds is exactly the same as before. Only the random distribution curve has changed here. After running the simulation with the new change, we take a look at our super duper handy dandy bottleneck analyzer and can see that the main bottleneck is no longer WST1, instead it is WST2. You've just seen how just a slight change in a very simple process can mean dramatic differences in results. 
You can probably imagine what can happen in a more complex process. That's why we highly recommend doing a dynamic simulation of your process instead of just a static value stream map analysis. We're almost done with our presentation. Before we take questions, PMC also offers services in factory design, laser scanning, lean and traditional IE services. If you are already underway with productivity improvement initiatives or your company or are wondering where to start, PMC can help you. Mm -hmm.